In this video, I'll cover the two rectangle tools in Corel Draw, Rectangle and Three Point Rectangle. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. The Rectangle tool can be found on the toolbox and can also be activated by the F6 key on a PC or the R key on the Mac. The property bar displays the default outline width and line style for all graphic elements, which can be changed for a rectangle once it's created. A rectangle is created by clicking and dragging from one corner to the opposite corner. Once created, the rectangle has eight sizing handles all around and an X at its center. Corner handles can be dragged to resize while maintaining the aspect ratio, and side handles can stretch or narrow. Clicking and dragging the X moves the rectangle, and keeping the Shift key pressed constrains the move to be horizontal or vertical. When I click on the X, the sizing handles become rotation handles, which can be used to rotate or skew the rectangle. The rectangle center is now a circular pivot point, which I can click and drag to a different spot, and now this point is the center of rotation. I'll undo, and clicking the pivot point brings back the X and the sizing handles. If I want to draw a rectangle from its center, I can hold the Shift key while dragging the mouse. Holding Control or Command on the Mac makes the rectangle a square, and I can hold both keys to draw a square from its center. As long as a rectangle's handles are displayed, I can change outline width, line style, left click a color swatch to add a solid fill, and right click a color swatch to set the outline color. I can also use the object position fields in the property bar to place the rectangle. By default, the X and Y coordinates here define the location of the X at the rectangle center. But I can also choose a different reference point, like the top left corner, and specify that point's coordinates. When I use the object size fields to specify width and height, the reference point remains in place while other points move accordingly. The same applies for the scale factor fields, which reflect the change from the rectangle's original dimensions. If I change either percentage, the reference point stays in place. I can also enter a rotation angle. If I want to make changes to a rectangle that isn't selected, I need to first select it. I can select any rectangle while the rectangle tool is active, or I can press the spacebar to temporarily activate the pick tool, which I can use to select the rectangle. The property bar features three corner options, and round corner is active by default. Because the lock icon is enabled, when I increase any corner radius, all corners update. Clicking scalloped corners brings the rounding inward, and chamfered corners are straight diagonal lines. If I want different radii for different corners, I can unlock and change individual corners. If relative corner scaling is off, the corner radii remain the same when the rectangle is made larger or smaller. When relative corner scaling is on, the radii scale along with the rectangle. Corners of a selected rectangle can also be modified with the Shape tool, whose icon is just below the Pick tool. Nodes appear at each corner point, which I can drag to change them all by the same amount, even when I change the type of corner. To change just one corner, I can click one of its nodes first, then drag. Or I can hold the Control or Command key and drag a node to change just one corner. Here are some other tips about the Rectangle tool. Double-clicking the rectangle icon creates a page frame, or a rectangle sized to the page borders. When I open the Objects Docker, or Objects Inspector on the Mac, by choosing Window, Dockers, Objects, I can see that the page frame is at the bottom of the stacking order. This means that this rectangle is behind or below all other objects on the page. When one or more objects are selected, and I hold the Shift key while double-clicking the rectangle icon, I'll get a rectangle enclosing the selected objects placed at the top of the stacking order. This is a handy way to add a quick frame around an image. When a rectangle is selected and the Properties Docker is open, I have the full set of rectangle options beyond those on the property bar. I can change Outline Properties, Fill Properties, 
or add transparency, and the Rectangle tab has the corner options. To create a rotated rectangle, the three-point rectangle tool can be found by clicking on the small arrow in the lower right corner of the rectangle tool icon, which opens the rectangle group flyout. There are two steps in creating a three-point rectangle. First, I'll drag to set the baseline, or rectangle width. Keeping shift pressed constrains the baseline to specific angles, and without shift, I can drag to any second point. Moving the cursor sets the rectangle height. With shift pressed, the rectangle is centered around the first point I clicked, and with control or command pressed, the rectangle will be a square. With both keys pressed, the rectangle is a centered square. As with any rectangle, all properties can be changed. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the rectangle tools in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.